I was in the worst pain I've ever been in my life, and I was just, like, bleeding terribly, and I couldn't keep food down, I couldn't, like, do anything, and the whole goal for the day was, like, making it to the hospital, because I was, like, I just collapsed, like, I passed out, and, um, I didn't have enough blood, I didn't, I was dehydrated, I was in a lot of pain, and, like, no one ever sat me down and was like, oh, this is cancer. It was more of just, like, a whirlwind of the term is being used, and maybe that's what it is, maybe it's not, and... During that time, I was in just, like, the worst pain I've ever been in my life. Without treatment, they said three months. But obviously, I decided to go ahead with treatment. With treatment, they gave me a year. So, that's where I'm at right now. If I stop now, I don't know, probably another three months. Kind of waiting and, and seeing is, as soon as it goes, like either to my bone marrow or to my brain, it's kind of over, that's kind of the beginning of the end, so it's really waiting for that and um if everything stays contained there's a chance you know <laughs> but it's they're on the word miracle a miracle as like your only chance It's like this huge scary task that everyone has to get done. They tell you it's gonna be really loud. I was prepared for really loud. It's so loud, it shakes, like, in your body. You can hear the magnet going around your head. woke up and I was on a respirator all those IVs and then like a catheter and all of this stuff and I was just like listening to yourself breathe with a machine It's not like voluntary breath. 
You're not breathing in and out and... I've just been completely alone with you and the machines. It's just terrifying. There's so little you have control of. It's like something's happening to you, and it's not a force that you can control. Your emotions and your mental state and all of that just really fall behind. They're just keeping up with what's happening in your body. It's a constant cycle. cycle could just stop. You have a numbered amount of chemo, you have a certain number of rounds. Like, okay, well, I'm in round 30 of 15, and there's a comfort in knowing that As long as there are still rounds to go through, there's still like a chance that things will get better. <laughs> it's a very predictable part of your life. After a while, it stops being a really scary part of life. So that there really is kind of a comfort to that. just at any time, all of that predictability kind of go away. Um, yeah, there's... I try not to think about what it's going to be like in round 15. I... Um, I just kind of... Um, plan for good things to happen uh, and it's it's such a weird time because it's it's like you can't let yourself go there and you can't let yourself plan for everything to fall apart but you have to plan for that in case it happens I find myself living in two types of futures I guess there's the future that I'm kind of planned on and expected and like, yeah of course I'll graduate from college and I'll be a teacher and I'll have a life and whatever and, and then there's there's that chance that life will go on without me routine and cycles of life just kind of ending for you and everything else that's around you just keeps going on
life is going to keep on going, you have to plan that it won't. <laughs>